My name's Tom Place, this is Chasing Cars, and this is my Subaru Outback Long Termer. Now when I found out I was going to be getting an Outback for my long term vehicle, I was really excited because I'm a big wagon fan. And this is a wagon. It's technically classified as a large SUV because it's raised and it's a bit more rugged and things like that. But the fact of the matter is it's a station wagon as we know and love them. It competes with things like the Volkswagen Passat Alltrack, but it actually sells really well in Australia. In fact, in 2021, it was the third best selling large SUV after the Prado and the Isuzu MUX and that's pretty amazing for a station wagon. In my short time with the Outback, the thing I've grown to love about it the most is that it just looks like nothing else on the road. It looks fun, it looks adventurous, and it's still got that station wagon chic that I personally love a lot. Another thing I really like about the Outback is just how much space it has. Opening up the boot, you'll see it's got a 522 litre boot, which is absolutely amazing. And in fact, it's got eight tie down points which is, interestingly, six more than Isuzu D-Max has. Now, it's one thing to have a big boot, it's quite another to have a useful boot. And that's another thing I really like about the long wagon form factor, is this is a long space, but the way they measure the boot to go right up to the window line means that it's a long and flat area, and you've also still got, of course, being a wagon, this area up here, so you can put taller items in without much fuss. It's also got a lot of nifty features in here, you can easily just put the rear seats down, like so, and you've also got an easy place to store the cargo blind just under here, alongside the full size spare which is just fantastic for country touring. While you would expect in a car like this to have a very spacious front seat and probably a big boot as well, it's great to see that there is a big back seat in here as well. The seats themselves are angle adjustable and you've got some nice knee room and a good amount of headroom as well. So yeah, I could see myself doing a lot of hours in this car. Now one thing I quickly found annoying about the Outback when I first started driving it is that the lane keep assist is on by default when you first start up the car and that's every single time. Now there's different settings to that in how aggressive it is. You've got the full lane centering, but what comes on by default is the lane departure intervention. And to turn that off, you've got to go here, you've got to go here, then you've got to go here, and then finally, it leaves you alone. And that's a bit annoying to do every single time you get into the car, to stop that constant little niggling interference when you just don't want it. Because this car doesn't have wireless Apple CarPlay or wireless Android Auto, and instead relies on a wired connection, one thing you're gonna be finding yourself doing a lot in this car is plugging your phone in. And that's made a little bit more annoying by the fact the USB ports have pretty much put the cable in a way that it makes it a bit of a nuisance to get in the car. And of course, once it's in there, it's easy enough to go in, but then getting it out is a little bit tricky. And I almost have to rely on the fact I've got a second phone in there to prop up the phone and to stop it rattling around as well in its holder. It's not super well designed, and it would be great to see if the USB port could instead be mounted up here and um, facing upwards so it would be out the way, or better yet, inside the armrest. Now, Subaru has designed a clever little system where you can put in your phone and it's got little runners down the side. However, I like to keep my CDs in here for the CD player. And sadly, you can't put it in the subsection here either as it doesn't have a cutout for the cable. Now in the next six months, we've got some big plans for this big red wagon. We're gonna do some long cross country trips, we're gonna do a tow test, and we're gonna take it off road. But what do you wanna see us do with the Outback? And what do you wanna know about it? Let us know in the comments down below. But until next time, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.